uh, talk I'm going to present today, uh, it's a borderline talk between uh, sociology and uh, computer science. And this is a relatively new topic that emerged uh, in the last 10 years or so. This, uh, let's say with the explosion of social networks. Uh, I think social network exploded not before 2005. There was very little before. Many people st start an investigation between two different fields that were seen pretty much separated until the beginning of uh, the last decade. Uh, my name is uh, Manuel uh, Mazdara and um, it's an interesting name so it's easy to it's easy relatively easy to spell and relatively easy to uh, to begin. I don't want to spend too too much time to present myself uh, in terms of uh, curriculum in terms of uh, research because these days thanks to social network it's very easy to find myself you could just google my name you can find the linkedin profile whatever so it's very easy to find all the information you need about myself but you, you won't find the meaning of my name which is very important for me and it's i think it's important to remember to remember it uh, my name is Manuel, it's a Spanish name actually. Manuel is the English pronunciation, but it's a Spanish name. Actually it's a Hebrew name, which means God with us. If you, if you look at the Bible, the Old Testament means exactly this. And the uh, family name is interesting because it's a um, Sicil Sicilian, but actually Phoenician uh, name, which means fortress, citadel. Okay. And this is the, there is a town in Sicily here. Actually I'm from here which is near Bologna, but there is a, a town in, uh, in Sicily called Mazzara, which was originally uh, a Phoenician fortress, a Phoenician citadel, and then it became Arabic and so on. So it's pretty interesting, you know, because you have Hebrew Spanish name and uh, Sicilian Phoenician name. It took me 20 years to understand the origin of my name, but now I, I know it. it's pretty interesting to me. I, I, I'm going to start uh, my talk about sociology and computer science showing uh, uh, this from this is for actually from Raphael you can find this painting the school of Athens in Rome and it shows uh, a little bit in a sort of idealized way of course not real what uh, research is and what research sh should should be at least in in theory you see a lot of um, philosopher and this is in the Middle East Plato which has the Leonardo da Vinci face actually because Raphael was an admirer of Leonardo da Vinci and uh, okay you know people talking discussing uh, in this agora the Greek um, square without um, without no inhibitions without uh, um, obstacles, uh, intellectual obstacles of any kind. And so this is more or less what we believe. And I think most of us these days believe that um, we are starting in a new era. Internet is a relatively new thing for everybody. And social network and web 2.0 is the next step. And uh, at the global level, instead of a uh, city level or regional level, it gives us the possibility to um, exploit the, uh, uh, the, the different knowledges in different places of the world, put them together in something that I'll call collective intelligence, and discuss about topics that were not accessible before. It was just 20 years ago, it was pretty much very difficult just to buy a piece of hardware from, from England, for example. It was very difficult. I remember that when I was a kid, uh, finding things about computers uh, was, was very, very difficult. Now you just go on the web and you can buy uh, anything on Amazon. It happened so fast, so quickly, and, but it's already so normal for us to do business in this way that maybe we are we didn't think much about the consequences of all this these are some of the uh, most important inventions of history so book first the printing gutenberg printing and industrial revolution the telegraph just think about how many years or centuries or even more sometime uh, passed between one and the other one. Sometime like thousands of years between the first two, couple of hundred of years between the second and the third, and maybe 100 or 150 years between the third, and uh, between the third and the fourth. So now in 20 years we are, 
we, we have done so much, which is really incredible. The problem is um, that uh, since this process is so fast, has been so fast, uh, we, we may have not, maybe we didn't have the time to, to think about uh, sociological, philosophical consequences and political consequences, economical consequences, consequences of, of all this. While there, were, there is uh, so much literature about uh, Sometimes it's just uh, literature about the story of people, so novels uh, of troubles caused by the Industrial Revolution, consequences for family. Uh, in Italian there are so many novels in 17th, 18th centuries about the, the social condition created by Industrial Revolution. Most of them negative, other positive. But there is not much about this because uh, the, the philosopher, the, the thinkers didn't have the time to think about uh, what the technology, how technology is affecting our world today. And uh, I like this quote from by, by Thomas Edison that it's about failure, not because we, we often are obsessed about, about failure in our culture and failure is nothing else than uh, the, the fire that uh, Lead, uh, lead, lead us to new inventions and uh, to uh, a better world. So we shouldn't be afraid too much of fail. We should try to experiment topics and do research on things that maybe are not the easiest and will not bring us immediately results, but, but they will eventually. And if not for us, it will be they will bring cons positive consequences for other people in the future. We are just adding our little bit. Coffee, espresso, I think is still the best invention so far. <laughs> Better than the internet, of course. In terms of time that you need uh, to um, access information, this is the Vatican Library. Okay, uh, You cannot access the library and you will find very, very few pictures of, of this. Vatican Library is one of the biggest library, private library, private in this, uh, not private, you can visit, but it's not normal to visit. And uh, okay, think about, let's say 100 years ago or even less, much less, you need an information, no? You need to go to, to Rome or wherever the library is, traveling. Okay, now we are, we are, you are there, but you are just at the beginning of the trip. Because doing research, it means to be able to go through all these uh, shelves and find the information you need and to link this information with others. It's really incredible, incredible work. And this is, this is the library in Rome. Uh, so what happens today? Today is very different. So if you need an information, wh whenever you have, a, think about this, whenever um, you have a question in your mind, uh, what do you do? What is the first thing you do? I don't know, I'm not sure about whatever, no? Specific uh, food recipe or uh, any, any sort of doubt you have in your mind, you just open Google or another search engine, but most of the time Google, and you, you type keyword. This is what you do. Most of the time you find some answers, but in a few minutes. You don't need to travel, you don't need to do anything. Of course, there are many things that are changing, the way in which people play, you, the way in which people do homework, the way, in we, the way in which you socialize. But the point is, everything is happening uh, so fast, and uh, I think we need some tool, some filter, something that uh, will enable us, will allow us to find uh, not just the information, but find the information we know, find the information we, we think trustable. And I want to show uh, a video, this is four minutes video, and I'll watch with you, because maybe many of you know this video, but not all of you. Uh, okay, you cannot, there is a music background, but the information is very important. I mean, it was somehow surprising for me.
think about the role of academia, of schools, of education system in general, in a world that uh, is running so fast? How can you be up to date? 15 jobs by the age of 38. This is an interesting question, isn't it? This is not my video, you can find, of course, the copyright of the videos, you can find the authors doing that. Okay, this is just a catchy video. Um, not all the information may be 100% accurate, but I verified most of them and most of the information are accurate. There are things that I don't agree with, like uh, when you, computational power of the brain and capacities of the brain, but that's, that's another, another discussion. The point is, um, we are living in a very, very, very very fast world everything is happening and so quickly how can we just how many look at how many information you saw in this video how long does it take to verify all of them okay now I'm here I'm saying I'm verified most of them please trust me but why do you trust me maybe you trust me because we built a relationship over time so you know that most of the time when I do things, I do things well, I verify. But this is the problem of trust. It's, it, it appears already in this, in this video. No? So many information and you have just to, to trust me. So 
the question is why you should trust myself and now I'm gonna explain you how you can build models of trust and tools to somehow try to help in this uh, scenario wild scenario web 2.0 uh, has a technological backbone and most of you every day pretty much use uh, things like Google for sure or Yahoo maybe some of you use blogs uh, you are blogs author reader wiki instant messaging uh, the most famous famous of course is Facebook LinkedIn MySpace is a little bit out of date now but it was very popular 10 years ago Wikipedia also the problem of trusting the information on Wikipedia it's is another issue then business online you have you eBay and then you have YouTube Twitter uh, and so on and this is I think that if you consider a normal working week uh, or working month I guess most of you will use these tools 80% of these tools uh, every month or, or every week maybe not myspace maybe not Flickr, but maybe not twitter so we have already a lot of technology a lot of um, uh, things are going on uh, second life is another thing that uh, it's pretty interesting it's now not so popular anymore like it was a few years ago it's very strange how people can find uh, time to have a second life when most of the people hardly have time for the first one and this has always been a very very interesting question <laughs> in my mind uh, Wikipedia is huge YouTube uh, YouTube is really uh, now I think that uh, Wikipedia and YouTube are probably the, the, mm, the most important sources of, of information in terms of also news instead of reading newspaper uh, online newspaper people find the uh, information on YouTube and Wikipedia so a lot of opportunities but um, it's very difficult that a new technology is able to bring only positive things usually bring positive things together with uh, problems and I think all this technology is um, bringing now uh, is just making is making worse is worsening problems that were already there 50 100 years ago you have so much information now you have TV uh, magazine uh, newspapers TV channels uh, and now on top Facebook Twitter blogger etc and how how can you decide how can you distinguish between trustworthy information relevant information and just gossip for example this is how uh, in um, communication mm, studies you know, if you follow a curriculum in uh, communication how they will explain you the media the media processing um, the media processing of information now you have a journalist uh, finding something into the world observing an event then you have a production phase where everything is edited or filtered and then you have the presentation so I mean from the original event to the final uh, information that people will see and perceive because it's also a matter of perception of course perception of the, the, the guy observing here and the perception of guy observing there so whatever truth is there are very very few chances that it, it, it passes uh, uh, unaltered from the beginning to the end but I mean historically this was considered um, a very good thing because uh, there were intelligent people with cultural knowledge perception uh, experience able to decide what was good for for the audience and what was not and in which term to offer the information but the, uh, in this global world you you easily see how uh, most of the time what is a free market becomes a set of uh, economic cartels you can see cartels for oil for pharmaceutical industry or whatever so sometimes you may have the doubt that and you ask yourself that maybe uh, given how the market works you may be able you may be able you you may see at some point uh, emerging uh, information cartel no so it happens all the time that you read news like this where there are press agencies or uh, marketing agencies that um, are joining each other for 
for financial reasons, for whatever. So, uh, what were the original rules? Like, for example, Reuters at the beginning um, uh, were prohibiting that 15% uh, or more was owned by a specific single individual. Now, this is not happening anymore. So, uh, you have a single family owning 53% of this company. This is, but this is just an example, no? But if it happens for uh, any other kind of business, you say, okay, fine, I don't, I don't care if Nestlé is owned by 60% by a single family, that's not really a serious issue. But when it happens with information, it's a little bit uh, more worrying, because if you open books about, I mean, socio sociology books, I mean, recent, recent works on sociology, last 30, 40 years literature shows that there are a few, a few points to, to worry about. This is what is called silence transfer is defined in this way in literature. The ability of a mass medium to transfer relevant tissues from its news media agendas to public agendas. And um, if you read this author, Mac Combs and Show, they, they will, even in recent literature, but even in the original one, they will um, explain uh, the agenda setting theory, which is uh, the basically the ability of, uh, of to do silence transfer, I mean, to transfer the agenda of the news owner, the media owner, into the agenda of politics and normal people, citizens. And another interesting thing that you will find in this paper, and then there are books as well, is the spiral of silence theory, which is very interesting, because in democracy is very interesting, because it says that if some authority, let's say, for example, TV or newspaper, says that, um, majority of people, like 80% of people, think this, do this, do that. Even if it's not true. If you feel that you're in the 20%, so you feel that you're part of a minority, even if maybe it's you're part of a majority, you, you, you may tend towards hiding your idea. So, for example, stupid example, the president, Italian president, previous one, Silvio Berlusconi, was um, welcomed by people, no? yes, people, 80% uh, of the people like him very much, whatever is true or not. If you feel that you may be in the 20%, you will not very keen, you will be not very keen to go around in the cafe, street, uh, bars, or whatever, and say, oh, you know, I don't like Berlusconi, because you, 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 you imagine that around you, there will be so many people thinking in the opposite way, even if it's not true, even if the original information is just made up. So from the psychological point of view, it's so easy, it's so easy really, if you, if you can use the, the media, it's, it's incredibly easy to, to move your, ag your agenda into the people's agenda, then as a consequence, politics agenda. Because relatively to the first picture I show you about the gatekeeping, Mm, there are no real facts. Everything is perceived. Everything is perception. Everything is about interpretation. Interpretation is about uh, what you, what your backgr cultural background is. How the cultural background has been built over the years. How somebody else, your teacher, your family, told you that things are. So of course you may be see something so obvious and so straightforward, but you may not be able to actually interpret in the right way, whatever right means, because you have no psychological and cultural background. And uh, to finish, to complete this, this part, and then I want to, to move more into the algorithmic part and uh, show you the, the, the prototype and what we are going to do. But I think this uh, premise is very important. Uh, I, I've noticed that most of the time, uh, in some counts, of course not all, in Italy quite a lot, in England much less, there is a news of um, Hegelian dialectic and uh, to, to transfer the, the news owner, without mentioning any, uh, news owner agenda into the people's or politics agenda. Uh, usually, um, there is a, what is called by Hegel a thesis, is an intellectual proposition. The antithesis is just the negation of the thesis, so a reaction to that proposition. And the synthesis is uh, 
uh, is a, another another statement uh, trying to solve the the conflicts between thesis and antithesis. And uh, I remember that when I followed an English course a long time ago, uh, I was a teenager, and the, the teacher uh, to train us in conversation used to apply this uh, Hegelian dialectic. So there was one guy in the, in the class saying, okay, th say something, and then you, another guy was called to react, and then uh, so on. It's, it's, it's an interesting ex rhetoric exercise, actually. For example, uh, uh, the fire of Rome, the famous fire of Rome, no? then you say, okay, there is a fire in Rome, and then of course people are a little bit, um, I mean, they don't like it, so you can always blame Christians, and then you can enslave Christians or, or whatever. And th but th oh, I'm not saying anything new because this is the Plato Plato's cave. I mean, this is at least 2,500 uh, years old story, where Plato says basically something simple. These are the citizens, okay? It doesn't call citizens. These are the prisoners. This, I these days you can see these shadows like if they were newspaper or TV channels or whatever. So this is the fire. Look, there are people here bringing these shapes and projecting the shapes on the wall. No? So people think that the actual things, the real things are these shadows. They have no idea about this because they are prisoners here. And Plato says, uh, let's suppose that one of these guys for some reason is able to break this chain and go outside the cave seeing the, the, the sunlight he will be a little bit surprised and it will be quite a shock but the, the most important thing is not the fact that this guy will realize that okay this is not the, the actual thing these are just shapes and these are the actual things whatever real means the, Plato says if this guy is coming back into the cave and try to explain to the other guys, look, this is not the thing. I mean, you are just watching a movie. You are not watching the real stuff. They will not take him seriously. I mean, they will probably take him. I mean, we consider uh, him like like a crazy man, or, and their action may be violent. So now we have. Uh, Two things. We have a old problem and a new technology. New, this new technology is uh, solving many of the problems, not all of them. And it's making some of the old problems bigger, I think. How can, you, how can we use the internet as an open platform where users can just interactively um, discuss uh, information, things, and uh, they can choose topics, sources, uh, they control the relevance of the information, etc., etc. Because this is the idea. We have a, a, an important technological backbone. Let's use it. Uh, in this table, you, there is a synopsis between the traditional media and social networks. In, 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 the, in the middle here, I'm also considering search engines the way they were used 10 years ago before the social networks explosion. So you can evaluate um, the media according to few few criteria. For example, okay, presence of the news, you know. Who decide the presence of the news? For example, on a magazine is decided by the publisher. In a search engine, the ranking algorithm is important. And in social networks, to some extent, is decided by people. And so on, you see interaction is not possible in traditional media. Topic content is decided by the publisher on one side, by the, the network on the other side. In um, social media, of course, you have a possibility to expand the topic, decide the, decide the source. And, and uh, this is the most important thing that we are trying to fix. Pretty much, there is no um, individual ranking based on, on trust, a trust um, that uh, towards other uh, users of the network. So we want to fix this problem. And this is our, um, I mean, this is uh, uh, Hannibal's route when uh, he, he had to go, he had to pass through Alps and go and go to, to Rome, and he couldn't find um, he couldn't find a, a proper way for 
for passing through and uh, so he said basically if we don't find a way we will we will make it so if none of the tool software tool conceptual tool way of thinking uh, the current current uh, available on the market uh, or on open source etc if none of them uh, are able to fix uh, this issue we have to find something something new so this is a uh, Maslow um, uh, book the psychology of science uh, Maslow is the guy that is famous to have um, invented defined the pyramid of, of needs you no know? so from physical needs to up and up and up psychological and social needs but he also wrote a very very nice book about the psychology of science and uh, it explain he explains how very very often uh, scientists are just uh, um, they have their mind into one thing into one method into one um, solution and they don't really find they don't look really look for new problems but they look for problems that they can be so can be solved with their solution and this is a little bit tricky so Polydoxa is a, is a social platform. For now, we just uh, created a Twitter prototype because Twitter is uh, simpler in terms of uh, the kind of information you have to analyze. You have just text instead of pictures, and uh, you don't data mining is not complex. This is the point. So you want to create a virtual agora to discuss information. The the name is a Greek name. So poly means um, many. And doxa means opinion, so common belief. So polydoxa means you 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 can express multiple opinions. It's not uh, just one way uh, tool like TV or something like that. So you can have more control of the information. You can think. You can discuss, verify the information. You can uh, interact uh, with other people, and you you can be active because the internet offers you the opportunity to be to be active and so you want to use it so i will show i will show you some screenshot from the twitter um, from the twitter prototype actually at the moment at the moment i'm, I'm looking for resources to to develop uh, something more complex maybe on top of facebook or really something from scratch so I'm in this phase of um, funding hunting. But uh, for what it is now, you have uh, static and dynamic parameters of this application. Okay, so you can decide the trustworthiness of contacts and sources. So let's let let make it simple. You want to. Um, at the beginning, okay, when you install the platform, you decide. Uh, trust values for each of your contact okay put it very simple and you have dynamic parameters the name dynamics tells you that um, you are going to um, these are going are going to change so the the, 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 the value that you ass assign at the beginning of the story will change and will change according the way in which uh, the, the the users interact interact each other okay so for example simple example it's a little bit more complex but i want to make it simple of course uh, like or dislike when you have dislike of facebook tell tell us something quite important about about the trust to some extent that we have each other I, if i follow more often a user i like more often the the posts it means something okay so if you have many like for a post uh, it means that your network uh, or, or a specific user of your network welcomes that kind of information so instead of having just uh, you know for example google rank you know you can alter it according to the trust you gave to that the specific user who posted that 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 information so I'm gonna show you a very simple way, as um, Einstein say. Now, if you can't explain to a six years old, you don't understand. So I hope that I can explain this to you at least, that you are older. 
we, we decided to build on top of Twitter because it's simple and uh, also because okay the data the data as I say you have to analyze are much simpler you have text analysis and that's it so every time you search for a keyword okay the trust is recalculated for, for each contact and the results are presented in this specific order okay so you have a trust value in the range 0 100 inside your your platform you look for a keyword for example bmw and then you get the result in an order that is prioritized according to the trust value associated with the specific user who posted the information at the beginning so we have a proof of concept and as i told you i i'm trying to I'm, I'm trying to develop the thing and I'm in the phase of catching mm, resources at the moment. So static trust is chosen by the user. The dynamic trust is calculated according to the follow parameter, parameters. These are valid for Twitter, but some of them, not all, uh, like the, not all, they may, be, they may work for Facebook, LinkedIn, and other platform. So number of retweets, number of favorites, number of uh, mentions, a number of uh, follow Friday. If you remember, follow Friday is a specific uh, Twitter thing. It, it, it doesn't really matter, but it's just a way, if you don't know, to signal to another, you, to, to a follower, the relevance of a specific uh, person. But anyway. Um, and of course, the numbers of user tweets containing the search keyword. So what, what you get is um, at the beginning of your experience, you just set, uh, okay, you, you have your Twitter contacts here, and you set up a trust, a starting trust for each of them. For example, I may trust Le Monde 50%. Uh, this, uh, this has been a student helped us to develop this. So this is, the student was French, so this is why most of the things are, <laughs> are French magazines or so. Uh, I may, I may, but this is English, for example. I may trust uh, BBC 27% instead of, you see, this is very French thing because you trust much less BBC than Le Monde. <laughs> but anyway, so this is just setting parameters. And this is an abstraction, simple abstraction of this linear combination which um, we are using to calculate the trust. So you have these parameters that basically are, are the, one, the ones I mentioned before. So you have the static, tr static trust, the, the original trust, uh, the, the favorites, retweets, mention, follow Friday's result count, exactly the things I said before. And there is a linear combination with this alpha parameter. Only the administration can alter the alpha parameter because you may, you may give different, different, you may want to give different weights to different parameters here. For example, you, you want to consider more important the retweets than the Friday follows. Of course you can. So what you get is a dynamic behavior of the trust values goes going up and down. So uh, the coefficients, as, I showed, as, I, as you saw, are set by the administration. There is a these are practical things when, when the trust goes beyond, uh, beyond the top, so beyond 100%, of course you have to rescale all, all the values. And the most important of all, trust has to, go, has to be able to go up, but also to go down. So when, when something, uh, so people are not interacting for too long, it means that probably something is happening. So you want to reduce the trust accordingly. So the oldest interaction are just practically removed by the database. So this, as a consequence, will decrease the trust value for the contacts who have been ignored for, for some time. So the admin just can, you know, these are the alphas. The alphas I showed you before, you can uh, just set all the values of the alpha. Okay, zero, zero to one, one is the max. And what you get is um, uh, the tweets that are reordered, so in, with a different ranking, according to the trust of, of the user. I'm not sure you may be able, you can read from the back, maybe not, but I'm sorry. 
Uh, if you have any questions, you can interrupt me now. Uh, I'm almost done. I want just to say a couple of things on the market and then spend a couple of minutes on speculation of, on the impact that this can have on society. Uh, but uh, if you have important questions, uh, I think now is also the right time. Unless you want to make questions on market or other things. This is a final table that shows how Polydox is fixing some of the issues I, I told you before. So relevance of the news is now decided by the user. You are allowed to interact, something that you cannot do with TV. You can decide the context, the content of the, top, uh, of the discussion, you can expand the topic, you can decide the source, and now, finally, you also have uh, this uh, individual ranking, trust-based ranking. There are, of course, other tools on the market doing similar things, but not quite the same, not exactly the same. I don't know if you know ClickZ, the news, uh, 360 Flipboard, uh, Zeit, some of them, they have some behavioral intelligence. So some of them are able to, to mine, to analyze the data, and um, to give you some information as a consequence of that. But none of them, in my understanding, otherwise I wouldn't go on with this, none of them are really able to consider all the social graph and the trust parameters. So this is why I'm trying now to to develop uh, further this this tool on top of Facebook, uh, it will depend on, on resources, of course. Finally, just a little, a couple of minutes of speculation. What the consequences of this tool, when of course it, it is in its full shape, will be. Uh, I mentioned and uh, I mentioned it before uh, second life uh, basically now we are living in a um, virtual world we are living in a real world but we are living most most of the time in a virtual world so you have virtual society you know so this community which is the network the relationship between the people are the links the individual are nodes and you have a social backbone which is the technology so most of the things that we used to do before offline now are online. Of course, probably, we don't know. We ca I cannot say technology will never reach a point that what is actual today will have to be actual tomorrow. You never know. Maybe we'll, we will find new ways to, <laughs> to do virtually things that we cannot today. But conceptually, uh, it's like we, if we, we, are, we, we were moving uh, from one concept of reality to another, with pros and cons, of course. And this is uh, another Plato's idea, just to get back 2500 century and, and we are not really inventing anything new. The world of ideas, so we are in this uh, virtual world and we can build collective intelligence. Um, this is interesting. Um, picture is Wilbur's uh, quadrants and okay uh, this will would take long to be explained but simply speaking you have two dimension one interior dimension and one exterior on the other side you have individuality and um, community so when you are into the exterior and in the community you are in the social plane you are behavioral when you consider exterior but at the micro level. When you are at the micro level and you consider the interior projection of people, you are on the level of the intention. Here you are on the level of culture, so you are on the social, social plane but individual level, okay? And so that's culture, that's what collective intelligence, um, where collective intelligence affect us and is the same thing I said before about um, the agenda setting, you know, the, the silence transfer. So with, with, um, with this platform and with other platforms, we will be able to act on that plane. And so we can build a, a new society where you can imagine that everything from finance to justice uh, to, the to, 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 to sustainable uh, exploitation of the planet 
can be done, uh, can be managed or done online, moving towards uh, uh, this new new reality. Uh, finished. Uh, the only thing is about suggestion about uh, being uh, being proactive. Don't be reactive to to the to the world, to the news, uh, whatever it comes. Need to be so to be so uh, better. And uh, this is just uh, our proposal, our offer for using technology in a, in a better way, instead in an active way instead of a passive way. So I, I done. Okay. Thank you very much for the talk. <laughs> and, uh,